Okay. The reason Forex is this crazy is because it's it's a game that is played all over the world by more than more than two million people at once with over eight trillion dollars, seven to eight trillion dollars exchanged per day, right? More than it's seven um, about seven trillion dollars that is transacted daily. So you don't expect it to be a normal game. And your only saving grace is your ability to be your, your discipline, right? Your risk management, your skill level, your, your level of contentment, right? And also your capital. Those are your saving graces. And it's it's forex is one of those it's one of those um work that keeps calling you you know all the other works you know most people they will say oh it is Monday I don't want to ah, Monday has come again I don't want to go to work forex is <laughs> forex is <laughs> it's probably the only um the only um what what do we call it the only work that you want to like it's always calling you ah come to the chat ah because you don't come to the chat how will you make money and then if you are not careful you end up losing money and there is no trader they said the trader is lying there's no trader that doesn't cut losses right there's no trader that doesn't cut losses you know uh i think i shared it was it i think the third week probably towards the end of the third week i said that i I, I suffered a lot in June, you know. June was quite terrible for me in trading. But that was just the first three weeks of, of June. You won't believe that the last week of June, it's more than compensated for all the losses I made in, in the first three weeks, right? And really, why did I why did I lose in the first three weeks? The reason is simple. It was because I had expectations, you know. And if there's one thing that you have to be careful about actually you know they call something analysis paralysis paralysis i guess that was what happened to me in june i was not i mean the first part of june i was not treating what i uh what i'm seeing in the market you know i was expecting that okay the market to drop further and drop further i mean gold now because my primary peer for trading is gold um most of i can see about 95% of my trading is on gold, right? And um US 30, then maybe GU, GA sometimes. You know, there are some times that I've just gone and look into those ones. But I I I had to do that discipline to only trade gold and only trade when I see my setup because um number one, that's a responsible thing to do. I don't want to be all over. If you are if you are mark if you are trying to mark all peers. At some point, if you get if you get muddy, I don't want that to happen to you, right? So, if you discipline yourself to restricting yourself to just a few peers, a few current currency peers, that's one. Then, the disciplined risk management, that's two. You will eventually turn profit, like you keep turning profit. You just have to if you get that right, you turn profit. Then you. start you 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 start to um what do they call it? You make it a recurring decimal. You you repeat. You read and repeat. Okay. So um, let's get to the business of the day. Um, I think it was Raspberry that that attended that asked the question about the point of entry, right? Point of entry for using this CRT model. Okay, and I'm going to just quickly mm -hmm. Okay. Please, if you are coming in, I would like you to mute yourself. Thank you. Okay. So let's just quickly, if you have any questions, you can drop it in the chat box. I will try to answer them before this finishes. Okay, so this is how the CRT model works. You can take your analysis from any time frame. Right, it's just like the um, it's it's like the two line strategy, right? Because it also uses two line. But the beauty of CRT is that okay, 
just like the two line strategy, you will know your exact point of entry, right? You know, in two line strategy, I I I taught you about you look for you look for reversal candles. You know, when you see a reversal pattern in the markets after your hand after your line or your line your point of interest, then you initiate your trade. You put your stop loss below the high or the low of the time frame that has been initiated. The eye of the law of that um, reversal pattern, and then what you go for the next, you take your profit at your at the next liquidity point, the, liquid, the next liquidity zone. All right. So it's just it's it's just the same principle for um the CRT model. So CRT means um it means what? Yeah, I mean candle rich theory, right? Um the candle. Candle range theory. So it is yeah, you are dealing with market ranges, really. Okay, and uh, let me show you an example of this a chart I marked from um this was this was on Thursday. So let me start from the beginning. Uh, all right. So just ignore this Fibonacci. I will, I will explain why I use the Fibonacci also here. Okay. So this is my trading view. And I just use my horizontal rail to mark this eye. Now, why am I marking the eye? I want to mark the eye of this long candle. This candle. This particular green candle. That's the high I'm marking. Right? I'm marking the high. I mark the high. And the low of the candle. Okay. And the low of the candle. So they've been marked. Now, there is a reason I'm marking this candle. Why am I doing that? The reason is because as at before this point, this point, before this candle, um, this um Friday candle, this was Thursday. Before this Friday candle came, it's already showed me that this candle. Um, that this candle has not been mitigated. We call something mitigated candles. Candles that it has not, the high and the low has not been souped or it has not been swept, right? This candle, the high, the candle is standing on its own as at this day. Let me quickly remove this, okay? Just to, to let's create a, a normal chart here, okay? Now look at this on the daily time frame. So this candle has not been swept. Now look at this. This let's start with this candle um, on the daily time frame. Now this particular green candle, it has been swept, right? The high was swept. The eye of the candle was taken away, and then what? It came down, right? Okay. And then look at this, this particular candle too. The first day after this candle, the candle was not swept, right? The eye of the low was not swept. But here, you can see the candle, the eye of the low was swept. It was swept and, but what? The can, it, it actually fell down, the candle fell. So normally, what you are looking for is that if the high of a candle, if the eye, or if the eye is swept, right, you are expecting the candle to come down. You are expecting the, the new candle to, to start selling, right? If the high is swept, if an high is swept, like what happened here? Look at this. Let me let me take um the horizontal ray. So I mark this point, <clears throat> right? And then I mark the low too. The low of this candle, I mark it too. Okay. Now, when this new day opens, right? The, mar the market opened here for this day, and then it went ahead to sweep this candle, it's to sweep this eye, right? And then it started falling. And what it fell down through to the what beyond, even beyond the low of this candle, right? So that's just the candle reach theory. But it looks simple, but it's not as simple as that because you have to look for the correct. Um, point of entry, okay?
Okay. So you are looking for <clears throat> the current the, the 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 correct point of entry, and I'm going to tell you where to to look for that. Right. Now, it's easy to mark candles. It's very easy to mark candles. I mark a candle that has not been mitigated. Right, and I will just. I will see, look at the market reaction, let the market enter, and then I will start doing something. But it's <clears throat> it's much, it's much, um, it demands more than that. So if you have marked a candle on a whatever time frame you are doing, personally, I for this candle, for this um for this trade, I'm marking the daily time frame. Now, where do I want to enter the market? Now I'm going to boil down, I'm going to skip three candle. Um, three time frames. So after daily, you have four hour. I skip four hour for my entry. I skip one hour for my entry. I skip thirty minutes for my entry. I'm going to go ahead to take my entry from where? From fifteen minutes. So I boil down to fifteen minutes. And what do we have in fifteen minutes? Fifteen minutes is the fifteen minutes time frame. Is where I'm going to take my entry for from. Okay. Now remember that this what you are seeing here. This is the candle. This is the the place I marked this high and this low. That's the candle I marked. Let me uh let me go back to my daily. Um, okay. So I want to add a color, a rectangle box, so that I'll be easy. It will be easy for me to. To know that, to know the area I'm marking, right? Uh, all right. So I'll be, it'll be easy for me to know the area I'm marking this way. All right. So I go back to my 15 minutes time frame. Okay. So this is my 15 minutes time frame. You can see the, okay, this was the low. So this was the low of that candle, the low of that, of that day and the high of that day that has been marked, right? Now, it now remains my point of entry. Where am I going to enter? Now, you can see that, remember that the first thing I'm looking at is that I'm looking for the high or the low of the previous day's candle to be swept, right? And also remember that I want to take my entry point from, I want to take my entry point from um from the 15 minutes. Remember I said that I skipped, after I've taken a position, a, a time frame, then I skip the next three time frames to come and find my entry, right? On the fourth time frame, right? Now see what happened. So the day opened. Uh okay. I believe this was still so it, this is still Thursday something something for me. Okay, Thursday. It was Thursday actually yeah, until where? Until Friday. Okay. So I think I will have to extend. So because you have to trace your stuff to the correct place. So it was still, okay. So this was where it became Friday. So it was still Thursday until here. And see what happened. So the eye has been formed. Then it started ranging, 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 ranging. And see what happened. It went here. And then what? It, came, it went up. It went up. This candle went up. It came down. Right? And then went up again and came down. Now, Usually, if you are going to see, we all know that if you want, if you are going to see a fall or a rise, if you want to see a cell, a cell pattern, mostly you are looking for what? A reversal pattern. You are either looking for an M formation or a strong candlestick reversal pattern. Like, what are reversal patterns? You know, all these um, uh, Morning Star, uh, Angin Batman. Um, what else do we have? The white marabuzo, those who, who, who have bought my course, they will understand what I'm saying. The candlestick reversal patterns, the different ones we have. You are waiting to see all those things. Now, it is not when you see that. Now, 
someone can be tempted when you see this this candle that has touched the high of the previous day you can decide to put your like take yourself palm you expect it to start coming no market is not like that we are, in fact why do people lose in the market it's because they expect that okay the thing will just start falling back 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 but it doesn't fall but it will start rising but it doesn't it doesn't go that way so you want to be patient <clears throat> right you want to be patient please you can uh if your background is not noisy i would like you to just maybe turn on your your mic i i i want to be sure i'm not talking to only myself please yeah Are you guys no, we're listening all right all right okay so so if you are taking your entry here i'm putting your um your tp here you know number one even if you take your entry here there's no where, where to put your stop loss where's your stop loss going to be do you want to put your stop loss that's where your entry is no so you are waiting for a reversal pattern to be formed so it's a game of patience so this was 1 a.m and then look on okay and um let me also add that on my before i continue my time zone i put my time zone to utc minus four that's the new york time right you know the new york is new york is like the financial capital of the world <clears throat> So I like to trade using their time with this model. So I, I, I changed this to UTC minus four. That's the New York time. Okay. So you, you know that um, when you are saying 4.30 by their time, 4.30 a.m. by their time, that's about you just had five hours or six hours, depending on the um on the whatever. So five hours to it. So that's um that's about nine. 9 p.m. and uh, 9 a.m. our time at this time, right? So this was the first bounce. This was the first bounce into this eye. And you can see it created this eye. It created a new high above the high of yesterday. And then what? You see that it collapsed back inside. Now, the reason you cannot enter here yet is because this just went in. This, it, does, it has not formed a reversal pattern yet. A reversal pattern would be that when this eye was created, then you see this low. Um, sorry, when this candle was created, after the candle was created, it, you want to see a, a strong reversal pattern. This is not a a very good reversal. It looks like railroad, Abi. It looks like a railroad track, but it is not completely right because, of course, you see what happened again. It came down. Actually, for a person like me, I think I will have entered here because. Number one, I've seen the first bounce and then the second bounce. And I usually enter the second bounce, really, personally. But the fourth or second bounce is not really the, you know, really the issue. It is what, what matters is your, um, um, what do they call it? What matters really is your reversal pattern, your correct reversal pattern, right? So, I could have I I would have entered here. I know myself I would have entered here and put my stop loss here. Right? Put my stop loss just a little bit above this eye. But see, if I had not if I had not give enough room for my stop loss, of course, this will have turned back and then what it's this place. And normally, personally for me, I don't actually if I'm trading gold and if I'm projecting for MZ, I'm projecting to get 200 pips from it now. I don't um I don't break even until it has moved by like 50 pips, 50 pips. So let's say my point of entry was this point. Okay, after I've seen this um this reversal, you know, entered from here, that's 2364. And then look, it has not even reached up to 50 pips. It has only made 30 pips and it will have stop haunted me. Actually, I entered this trade. And this particular day, I, 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 I think I I had one break even. I got one break even and then one loss, before the trade eventually went. Okay, went my way. So you can see it went back and then it stop pointed, and gave um, this high of twenty three sixty eight here, and then now this was the correct place to have entered this trade. 
when you see that this structure has been broken, how do you know the structure has been broken? When it forms an M formation, when does it form M formation? It is here. If it forms your M formation, when this point, this place has been broken through, this um um this middle middle range, middle candle, right? The the middle of your hem, it has been broken through. And this was it. It was this candle that broke it, right? I remember that day I entered at 2361 and I traded go down to 23 to I think 23, 20, was it it's 2087 or so? No, it was it was not that day. I know I I I caught about 400 pips from that trade anyway. 2321, I guess. 2321 was where I later took the, yeah, I, I, I took my profits around here, right? 400 pips, right? But it has top pointed me twice here. Yeah. And why did it stop point? It was because I did not wait for my reversal patterns. See, whenever you pick your entry on the daily, on the daily time frame, yeah, sorry, don't don't pick your entry. Or the, the daily time frame is what you use to mark to mark your point of entry. If you have marked it, you know, drawn your, you, 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 are, you are looking at, you are looking for the pattern on the lower time frame, 15 minutes, five minutes, right? You are looking for your reversal patterns on that place, and then you initiate your entry, okay? So the ideal thing would have been to wait for this information. Sometimes it doesn't give you information, I must be honest with you, right? But you have to, you, you don't want to be, stop lost every time in fact the time it gave me by the time it gave me this um entry again i really did not want to pick it at first i just felt like okay let me risk so i just risked a fraction i risked half of my initial first risk when it entered loss right that was what i risked and <clears throat> excuse me and it went my way you know that's when you now be of course i'm grateful that i actually entered the trade I, I made up for all the losses and even made more, more, more money. But um, but the bad thing had already happened. If I had not, um, if I had been patient to wait for the normal reversal pattern on the lower time frame, it will have, have like, I could have escaped um, that loss and even made more with my initial, um, from my initial trade, with the initial loss size I used, right? So, Patience is very important in this game, right? See, so this was um this is what we call look at this this pattern. Okay, use this. Okay, so we soon end this meeting. So look at this reversal pattern. I think they call this tombstone um doji right? This one, and then another one. When you are seeing things like this, and then you see this big this big candle, you know that okay. Is about to go down, right? So upon the close of this candle, I entered. I actually entered at twenty three sixty one. That was where I entered the trade, and then it came down. Right now, okay. So um, now how do you know the points? Because I noticed that a lot of us don't know where to even take your profits. Now that's where the Fibonacci comes in. I don't know if, I know a number of you will be familiar with Fibonacci and um, some people may not be familiar with it. So the CRT, if you watch the first YouTube video I sent to you that time, you know, I sent a Twitter, a Twitter um, video, a Twitter thread by one guy, the author or something. I sent that. Then later, I sent a YouTube video also. You know, that is a, a one hour YouTube video that actually details this very well. See, if you have if you have reached 0.5% of your range, mm -hmm. you are good, you are good. Okay, you have made 0.5% of your range, you are good. That's a good thing. Just party and go home. Take your profit and go home, right? So from where I entered here, 2360, to this place, 23.46, this alone is about, um, that's about 140, 150 pips, right? 140, 150 pips from this range, right? 
and then if you if you if whenever you take you have your good entry if you have taken your entry just target 0 0.5 um 0 0.5 range of your um of the candlestick okay the full candlestick for those who are not familiar with fibonacci maybe we we do you can a video on it later so your fibonacci is this this thing you can look for it here you know under your projection right you get your where is it safe is it under projection no <clears throat> it's under yeah under fibonacci so you see your Fibonacci retracement, okay? So you can you can use that too and customize it. So you have um zero, zero one, and then you have the in between zero point three eight, zero point five, zero point six one eight, zero point seven eight six, right? So just look for the middle zero point five. That's the half of your um the daily candle that you are projecting on. Half of it. Actually, most most especially that is important most especially uh, okay it's important to do that most especially if as the range of math okay it is important most especially if number one you are unsure of your of your um what's the what's the name of what i'm looking for if you are unsure of your trend if you don't know if we are still on the buy trend or on the sell trend, if you are, if you put zero point five, you are targeting zero point five of that range. That is is going to go a long way for you, right? So remember on this trade, if you start at twenty three sixty or twenty three sixty one, and put your stop at twenty three sixty nine, you are risking eight, 80 pips. There are, you are risking seventy pips to make one fifty pips. That's one ratio too, which is good. Right, one ratio two, but me, I told you that I I, I made four hundred pips from this trade, and it was because I I knew that we are in a sell trend for gold, and I saw that we are in a sell trend for gold, and if it is if the trend is sell, I know that okay, it will do the same range, right, and so that was the reason I waited. I waited for this trade and see what happened. Then broke here. So I actually closed it here because um usually if it breaks through, there's someone someone to have to do it. You don't have something to say, don't mute yourself, please. Thank you. Okay. So it broke through this place, it broke through the the mid-range. And then the full range, then what? I know that if it if it should break through this um the length of that candle, it's going to come at least down by another um I just use my Fibonacci actually. So so the <clears throat> the lower range after my zero, after my zero level is what minus zero point two one seven. So um you guys you can customize your Fibonacci sequence like this. So actually, this one is overshoot. If you just, if you take your profit here, you are still good. This is about 350 pips or thereabouts at, um, from your point of entry to this place. Okay. I want to, what's this, what's this? Okay. So you can set your Fibonacci. Uh, what's this? Okay. Yeah. So you can set your Fibonacci. Right. You can put in slot in these numbers. Maybe you you screenshot this. Right. Zero point three eight. Zero point six one eight. Like these points are points where you can take your profits. Right, but I target zero point five. If I know that okay, it's giving me a reversal counter trend, a counter trend reversal, a counter trend. I'm taking a counter trend trade. Right, let's say the higher time frame signifies a buy position, and then I see an opportunity to sell. If I'm going to sell that trade, if I'm going to take that trade and sell, 
I'm going to be looking to take my profit at 0 0.5 level. That's That means half of my candle range, right? But if I'm within the range, if the setup, if the um, trend is buy, if the buy, buy setup and um, buy trend rather on the higher time frame, and I see an opportunity to buy on the lower time frame, right? I'm going full for the full um the full range, right? That's from zero to one, right? But however, if I see that it's taking some time, I I usually take my profits maybe at 0 0.5, 0 0.618, or 0 0.78. Okay, so I want to believe that I made some sense with that. Okay. Did does this make any sense to you guys? You guys? Yes, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So um okay, I should have add a caveat to this also. Okay, so it's it's not it's not necessarily that it has to be your daily time frame. You can take your analysis on the hour time frame. In fact, with what I've observed, let me say with gold anyway, I've observed that the hour time frame actually works, it works faster. Number one, it is less risky. And then usually the hour time frame goes the full margin. Let me say I've done that for good quite a lot, right? I've done it for good. So if you see that a range is swept, now how do you even know if a range is swept? We've done the elaborate this thing. Okay, look at this candle now. Will you say this candle was swept? This particular candle, this red candle here, was it swept? Yes, yes. It wasn't. Was it when I say swept? I it mean, wasn't. Was it was when it? I say swept? I mean, I mean, was it swept by the next candle after it? No, it wasn't. Yes. No, it wasn't. Oh. This candle, this one did not sweep it. How did I know? See, it's it's not just about the next candle taking out the low. No, or taking out the eye. No. Is about if the next candle closes within range. If it takes out that low and then it closes within the range of this candle, this is what I mean. Okay, let's we've marked this now. Let's um let's say this is our high here. This is our now, and then this is our low here. Now this next candle, it swept. Okay, uh, let me not use that word now. It's closed. I mean, it's it took out this mm -hmm. low of this candle, but it does not close within this range. Do you get what I mean? It's closed below this range. So you can't use this. You can't use this analysis again. 